Um, first off, before I start, I'd really like to say a big thank you to uh, the organizers of this conference, uh, all of the uh, sponsors and the volunteers and the beautiful city of, of Wellington for hosting us. Uh, thank you very much. All right, uh, welcome to Uplifting Content with AI with a focus on NLP Cloud and ChatGPT. Uh, in this presentation today, I'll be showing you how you can integrate AI services into Drupal and to do that in a scalable way. Uh, before we jump in, I'd just like to take you through a few foundational ideas uh, that are sitting underneath uh, this presentation. Uh, the first one is that Drupal is a content experience platform, and by that I mean that the content is at the center of the universe there. We're trying to bring the AI smarts into Drupal rather than copying and pasting uh, content out to uh, AI services. Um, a really you know, favorite saying of mine is that data matures like wine and applications like fish. <laughs> it's nice to hear a few chuckles there. I, I often hear you know, people say, oh, I think it's the other way around. But uh, really, it's all about the content. And ideally, your content is going to be getting better over time. It's going to have higher quality. It's going to be more structured. It's going to be future-proofed and, and capable of serving uh, you know, different uh, applications. So that's very much an idea behind the uplifting of the content that we're discussing today. Uh, also, we're looking at tools for authors, editors, and marketers. Of course, you can um, you know, write custom uh, AI applications or integrations with Drupal. But here, we're looking at exposing those uh, to the editors to make their day-to-day -day lives a little bit easier. And we want to do this in an automated way. So by that, I mean. Um, that uh, augmentations and content uplifting can happen, say, for example, when nodes are saved automatically. So it's not just uh, an editor working on one piece of content at a time manually. Things can be automated. And then we can scale that out as well. So we can then apply this AI uh, uplift to uh, many uh, content items you know, across the whole corpus. And the aim here is to you know, unlock productivity gains uh, for your editors. Okay, 2023, what an amazing year it's been so far for AI. Uh, each week uh, that goes by, there's a whole string of announcements uh, that are made. Uh, this is the Gartner hype cycle for AI uh, for last year, 2022. And on the vertical axis there, you have the expectations. And you can see there's an awful lot of uh, technologies climbing the hill there. Um, you know, from innovation trigger up to a uh, peak of inflated expectations. You'll see generative AI uh, at the top there, or nearing the top, and it's fair to say we're right at the zenith of that first hump there when it comes to generative AI. Certainly with the release of uh, ChatGPT, uh, AI is very much is in the public uh, consciousness. Um, there are other technologies here as well. We have natural language processing. Uh, AI cloud services, and uh, data labeling and annotation. We'll be touching on all of those today. Okay, so we're going to be looking at two AI services. The first one is you know, ChatGPT. I've been talking to a couple of uh, developers here at the conference, and many of them are using Copilot uh, with, you know, to great effect uh, in their day-to-day -day, uh, development. Uh, you know, ChatGPT has been the fastest growing service uh, in humankind. I think it's, uh, it reached a million users in the first week. And of course, it's gone uh, from strength to strength to, to capture the imaginations of a lot of people. Uh, the underlying engine, ChatGPT4, is, is a big step up from GPT3. And, uh, you know, it's now capable of being used on a very wide uh, range of uh, domains and uh, use cases. The other service uh, I'll be showing today is that of NLP Cloud. I could have picked any number of services here, but I did pick NLP Cloud because it contrasted uh, somewhat with the approach taken uh, by uh, ChatGPT. Uh, NLP Cloud works on um, you know, textual content, um, but it does vary from uh, OpenAI's offerings uh, in that it hosts many different models. So NLP Cloud will take open models, host them on their servers and give you access to them uh, via APIs so that you have a lot more sort of choice there in, in the APIs uh, that you would like to use. Uh, here are some of them. As I said, most of them are 
uh, sort of concerned with you know operating on text, uh, and you can see that the the models they're using were actually some of the earlier ones that OpenAI uh, released when back when they were open. Uh, one of the very interesting ones there is classification, and this is where we're able to classify content according to a controlled vocabulary. This is something that's you know harder to do with uh, GPT-4, which will just create sort of the next best keyword. Here we can use a controlled vocabulary, and we'll be seeing that uh, in use later. So they're the two services we'll be looking at. Uh, we do have three Drupal modules uh, that we'll be using to bring all of this together. Uh, the first is the Augmenter model. So shout out to Naveen and Elio there who've worked on a lot of the code for that. Uh, Augmenter is uh, a system, a plugin based system for integrating uh, different AI services into Drupal. Uh, there are a number of services that have been implemented. The ecosystem is growing. Uh, we'll be having a look at uh, ChatGPT and NLP Cloud there. But as you can see, there are many others to, uh, to try out as well. We'll also be using uh, a module called the Event Condition Action, or ECA module. Uh, this is a very impressive module in, in my mind. Um, it took me a little while to find it, but now that I have, I'm quite happy. Uh, ECA is like rules for Drupal 7. It's like a ground up uh, rewrite. Uh, which uh, makes use of the event eco, um, sort of APIs in Drupal and the actions API as well. And it basically allows you to um, you know, orchestrate different processes uh, in a visual way. So ECA does this through this uh, tool called BPMN, Business Process Model and Notation. Uh, so this is an ISO standard, uh, it's a no code visual tool for dragging and dropping and, and creating these processes and it gets exported out as XML, and then that can be imported into Drupal, uh, Drupal to, to drive uh, the configuration. So in this particular case, um, on the left, we have uh, a trigger or an event, and this one is pre-saved content. So when content is being saved, just before it gets saved, that's the event that's being triggered. And then the, the label on that first um, edge there is auto-populate. That's actually a condition saying, has that auto populate flag been set? And if so, okay, let's run the rest of it. And we then have the actions, which are the, the rectangles there. Uh, and we'll be going into those in a little bit more um, detail. This is quite a simple linear one. You can, of course, you know, create uh, sort of more advanced ones. And, you know, it's really sort of fun to play with if you want to put together some uh, cool logic based on your core Drupal installation. And there is another module, ECA VBO. This does what it says on the tin. It just integrates ECO in ECA into views bulk operations. This is where the scalability comes in, right? So we're able to apply these augmenters and actions across uh, the whole corpus. So that, that UI that you get there is you have an admin screen and uh, you can configure up these actions now. Uh, through VBO and apply them to, to multiple objects uh, at a time. So bringing all of that together, just so you've got it all in your head, I, I like to think things in Drupal are simple, but then when you lay them out like this, you do see there are quite a number of uh, moving parts. Uh, you know, on the left, you have the external services. Uh, Augmenter uh, brings them in. Augmenter has uh, implemented the Actions API, which makes it available to ECA. And of course, ECA is integrating with Views Bulk Operation. All the ones in green, this is where the editors can, can uplift the content. So Augmenta has a, a plugin for the WYSIWYG. Uh, it has a field widget on the Node Edit screen to, to bring in content. And uh, on the ECA side of things, of course, you can you know, set up automations and, and bulk operations. OK, so let us pray to the demo gods. Um, I saw a presentation yesterday where the demo gods were not kind, and I did not want to, uh, to, uh, you know, to anger them today. So I did uh, preemptively uh, record a video. So what I'm going to do is um, sort of walk you through this. It's a rapid pace one, but we're just going to go through what this looks like uh, in Drupal. OK, so this is a demo site that I've got with Augmenter uh, enabled. And um, we're going to go in and have a look at the augmenters now. OK, so this is a plug-in system. And you can see there that we have many uh, augmenters defined, just sort of testing out a few things. 
Down the bottom, you can create new ones, and of course, you can create a ChatGPT one or various NLP cloud ones. Um, but we're not creating new ones today. We're just going to have a look at the ones that already exist. So we're going to go up and have a look at this Ask ChatGPT one that we've created. Uh, this is very, very simple. Uh, you can see it's got the OpenAI uh, connection there. Um, we're saying we're setting a context to the system, saying you're a helpful assistant. And we're just passing the input through as the prompt there. This is the simplest of all inputs. We're basically just saying whatever the editor types, we're just going to send that through to chat GPT and, uh, and get that one back. So that's the first uh, augmenter, very sort of simple setup. We do have another couple of uh, chat GPT ones here. The first one is social message. So this will be great for creating social messages for LinkedIn or Twitter. And we can prime the, uh, the uh, Ch chat GPT to be a, a helpful marketer. And we can ask it to write an engaging uh, piece for us. And then we have summarize, very similar. Um, we're just asking it to summarize for, you know, for a second grader. So you can see you can define any prompts that you like, plug them in. So you can really define, you know, ask sort of chat GPT um, what you want of it. Here's NLP Cloud. This is the blog post generator one or new article. Uh, it's very much more targeted. You don't really have to send any parameters over there. Basically, you, you send an input and you get the output back. And the next one is the classifier. This is an NLP Cloud classifier from a controlled vocabulary. Um, in this case, the configuration screen's a bit more advanced. You can say for content, audience, use that controlled vocabulary to uh, classify the content, and you want to reach that threshold uh, as, a, as a score to beat, basically. And, uh, and yeah, basically, that's it for the augmenters, right? So hopefully that gives you a flavor of how we're able to configure up uh, these different plugins. Now we're going to whiz over and have a look at ECA in the back end there. So you go to the workflow se section, and then you've got ECA. We've got two. Um, one is the auto one, which will happen on node save. And the second one there is a bulk one. Uh, so we've had a quick look at this one um, already, but the circle represents uh, an event that gets fired. Uh, the auto populate there will is a, as a a condition and we're checking a field on the node there and making sure that was set. And then we've got two augmenters here. So the first one is um, the social message one. So we're getting the title and the body out of the node that's being operated on. They're the source fields that we're getting it from. And then we have a target field of the social message. That's the field we're going to write the data in. And then we've got the augment augmenter down here. This is we're going to be using the social message one that we, we just saw configured. So that's the, the heart of what's going on here. And then we have a couple of flags that we can set on um, the node, right? So the first one is uh, set the check. That's saying, hey, editors, you've got to check this content. It's been auto-populated. Please make sure that you go in and um, make sure it's all OK. And then uh, the, the second one there is um, to deselect the auto. So we just want to turn off a flag as well to make sure it's not run again. And finally, we have the, the message there as well. It's just a, a reassuring message to the user at the end uh, to, so that they're all feeling comfortable that uh, their content has been updated. Now, this is the bulk one. I'm not going to talk through all of this just now. We will have a bit, a bit more of a, a look at that later. But it is very similar uh, to what we're already running. OK, so I'm going to flip over to um, the next one. So we've seen how the back end has been configured. That's really like a site builder uh, kind of setup um, there. Now we're going to have a look at what the editor experience is. So we have our trusty uh, create article page. You're going to see three things here. We're going to be playing around in the, the node edit screen and giving augmenters a bit of an exercise in, uh, in the node edit. Uh, we're going to see that auto populate flag kick in uh, um, on node save, and then we're going to give the, the bulk operations uh, a bit of a go as well. So let's, uh, let's kick this one off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the body, and I'm going to paste in an article that I want to know about. It's basically about the best books for youths. Now, there's that Augmenter drop down there in the WYSIWYG. So Augmenters can be exposed into the WYSIWYG. 
and we've selected the chat GPT um, one. So probably a little bit fast on that. But basically there's an Ajax call going back into the, the back end of Drupal. There's a private API uh, connection made to the API at uh, OpenAI. Uh, the wheels start turning there and a response will be generated. Uh, this is quite a demanding operation because there's a number of, you know, relatively large response being built. That will then get sent back to Drupal and then the result will be uh, sent through uh, back to the front end and that's going to be, then be uh, populated into this WYSIWYG. So we've now got uh, a nice article coming back um, and you can see even down the bottom there, it's, it's even talking about the, the themes and things like that we are, that we asked it to do in the summary. Um, up the top, we're now doing generate headline. This is an NLP cloud augmenter uh, and using the field widget. So NLP cloud has produced that headline and send it back. We've now got another field widget here to summarize, and this is going to be using uh, ChatGPT summarize augmenter that we saw. That's now uh, come back. I think that's probably a really sort of key feature there. And we've also got social message. And you'll remember that we asked ChatGPT to pretend that it was a, a marketer and was going to write engaging marketing content. And you'll see that the language that's coming back here is a little bit more salesy, so to speak. And then finally down the bottom, um, we've got our audience sort of field here. So you remember we had that classifier one. I've clicked the button now. The content is going off to NLP Cloud. And it's returned, I was a bit quick on that, but just one youth. Uh, field there, and then we were able to um, able to populate that uh, taxonomy uh, taxonomy field. So that's that's sort of stage one. That's sort of like you know playing around on the the node edit screen. You've seen the WYSIWYG stuff working, and you've seen the uh, the field widgets going. Now we're just going to go into stage two now. Just pretend I'm a really lazy editor, and I haven't written my summary or my social message and I want to auto-populate those. So that's what we're going to go in uh, and see just now. So, uh, yeah, so I'm clicking that auto-populate checkbox there, and that's saying to ECA model, OK, you're going to have to run. So I'm just blanking those out. OK, and right now we're going to save. And this is where the ECA model is going to kick in. It can see that it's an article. It can see that that field has been um, clicked, and now it's going to be running um, those other actions. So yeah, we're going to be doing the summary, the social message, and we're going to be setting those two things, OK? So that's come back. Let's have a look, see what's happened. OK, so we can see the auto-generate flag has been turned off, so that's worked. Um, the check has been turned on. The summary field has been filled in. Uh, and also, we now have a social message there as well. So that's basically, yeah, a little a little success there for the auto population of the content. This this may be helpful, you know, if you have, you know, if editors, as a general practice, are not filling in uh, their summaries uh, particularly well. The final part of the demo now is we're just going to look at the bulk populate. So we're just once again going to blank out uh, the content, and we're just going to set the checkboxes again. So we're getting rid of the check. We're doing the bulk populate one now. So this is the flag that the bulk population will be running on. And we'll save that. That should save very quickly because there's no auto operations happening. Um, we're coming over into the, the views, the admin section. And we've got our special augment view here. And you can see that we have this one action, this one VBO action that's been defined. And we're able to select that and apply it to um, that particular item. Now this does take a little while to chug through, so I'm just going to flip back here to the, the uh, model. This first event is the interesting one. You can see up the top right that that was a, a VBO uh, event. And we're once again, sort of similar pattern of having uh, the condition there and then our sort of actions that are all operating on, on the various fields. Uh, with VBO, there is a slight difference. Uh, you do have to set the save, right? You do have to save that entity um, after it's been processed. Um, yeah, so there you've got the save entity, and then we can uh, set the message. Cool. So we're going to flip back, and magically that VBO has run. We've had one update. We're just going to come in, and uh, we can see now that the field has been unset. 
the checks field has been set, and once again, these uh, these fields have been um, populated. So that is the uh, the, the conclusion of uh, you know the, the demo basically. I think when you're you're looking at this, you can hopefully see you know some of the the possibilities that are here, especially if you have say sites with thousands of nodes without a summary. Um, you can use a tool uh, such as this to to uh, bulk populate those. Cool. All right, thank you, demo gods. So, so what have what have we seen here? So, uh, hopefully, there's a few cogs turning, uh, wheel spinning there. On, you know how you might be able to use this on your site. Of course, we can create content and uh, summarize, extract keywords and uh, from controlled vocabularies. Using tools such as ChatGBT is just great for you know producing content outlines uh, and skeletons. Um, and also, you know, for fixing content as well, you know, there's just a whole wide range of applications. And using that WYSIWYG feature, you're easily able to, um, to do that. And finally, you know, it's possible to, to transform content as well. I haven't really shown that today, um, but you can do text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and many others, depending on which augmenters uh, you've implemented. Uh, there are, of course, a few warnings I, we really probably have to have to mention. Um, you know, I've got to admit a certain degree of excitement and fear when I see technologies like this. Sure, it is absolutely amazing uh, what large language models can do these days. And, you know, I do have more than one fear. But one of the main ones in terms of content is that um, we're just going to see, you know, a lot of auto-generated content on the web. I think as time goes by, it's going to be more difficult for us to trust what we're reading. You know, has a machine written that or, or a human? Uh, and of course, with you know, this sort of auto-generation of content, there is the danger of losing real insights, losing that tone of voice, losing that authenticity and trustworthiness. So I think as time goes by, this is really going to be uh, something that uh, you know, people value, uh, you know, that, uh, that tone of voice and, and uh, that human touch. It's very important to have an editor in the middle. Uh, large language models can hallucinate. They have biases. They uh, can sometimes just return content that you don't want, right? You know, uh, that's why you need an editor in the middle to review uh, and edit as needed. And you'll see I had those little check boxes there telling uh, editors that, hey, this content has been auto-populated. You really should check it. It's going to be a lot of disruption. I mean, I know that's obvious. I, you know, we've seen many artists on the web complaining uh, about how their, their livelihood and their ways of working have been totally destroyed by these generative uh, you know, models. I'm sure that's going to be the case for many uh, content creators. So it will change the way we all work. It's, of course, it's also going to change business models and uh, you know, uh, just totally change uh, industries and, um, and companies as well. So the, the trick is, here is to stay ahead of the curve work out how AI can work for you and how you're able to take advantage of that to, uh, to you know, avoid the, the tidal wave that's coming. Okay, so today we have seen um, your content being produced by NLP Cloud and ChatGPT. And ChatGPT and GPT-4 are the, you know, the, the, uh, the big ticket items these days everyone's talking about. Um, but really, this is just the beginning. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, there was a Google memo that was leaked, and it was titled, We Have No Moat and Neither Does OpenAI. And basically, the, uh, the memo was talking about how Google now no longer has any intellectual property that is not widely known. And uh, basically, the genie's out of the bag. People know, you know how to use these models and to, uh, to build them. Uh, and the... You know, the memo mentioned open source there, but you know, basically by open source, it, I think it just means the open community um, building things. So more open models, they'll be more efficient, they'll be less costly, they're faster to train, and they'll be less restrained. There's many guardrails in, in uh, ChatGPT. So we're just going to be seeing a whole lot more action in this space. Uh, using tools such as Augmentary is a nice flexible way because you're able to, you know, to pull in these different models as they come about. Uh, it really is an amazing time to be alive. Okay, whoops, I skipped one slide there. So the, the question is now, you know, over to you guys. You know, hopefully you've got a few ideas from the presentation 
uh, today, and I'll throw it back to you. How are you going to uplift your content? Thank you. I can't actually give you a number. I, I will say that, because um, I, I just don't have that off the top of my head. Uh, when OpenAI's GPT-3 was out, people were saying, oh yeah, it is you know, quite expensive. And then, then they cut the prices by 10, by 10, you know, they're now a tenth of what they used to be. So they're certainly a lot more competitive, um, a lot more competitive now. But yeah, it's not like, yeah, OpenAI has traditionally been seen as a more, one of the more expensive services, but I guess they're, they're running a lot of compute to, to return those. But now that Microsoft's come on and put in a lot more money, I think they're investing in their infrastructure a lot more and, and those prices are, are coming down. OpenAI also fixed up a lot of their, um, their terms of service and around privacy and things like that. So they've definitely become a lot more sort of enterprise focused as, as the services become more popular. Yes, yeah. So that my demo site was a bookshop demo and it had books about youth and adults. So I, I had put that in as a taxonomy, just youth and adult. And those two terms were sent off to NLP Cloud with the content. And then NLP Cloud worked it out, oh, this is about youth. I'm going to return that youth keyword. So I did have to fine tune up that threshold value, you know, a, li a little bit. So it may be a bit hit, hit and miss, but, uh, you know, it's a pretty cool feature. That is probably not going to work in really sort of out there sort of domains. You've got to remember these language models are, are trained on, you know, sort of a generic area. So if you had a super specific taxonomy, it may not work for you. But I think for, for general things, it, it should work okay. What is the intellectual property of an article like that? Good question. Now, uh, recently there's been a court, I, I think, I don't know if it's in US or Europe, who said that there is no copyright in that because it's been um, produced by a generative AI. And I think it was around an album cover that someone had made for a band. People started copying that album cover and there was no copyright in that. OpenAI has recently changed its uh, terms of conditions saying you do have copyright in that. So there is copyright in the response and in the prompt. I believe that's what OpenAI is saying. I don't know what the, the courts are going to say. They're actually at odds with what OpenAI is trying to do in it, their, their terms. So I think, the, I think the law may well have to catch up in, in this area. Yes, I, that's a, you know, I don't know the answer to that. So the question was, does, will auto-generated content be penalized you know, from an SEO perspective? I guess it is an arms race as to you know, what, uh, you know, if you can detect what's been written by an AI or not. So who, who knows, Google may well do that. But I think Google may well, you know, like pushing stuff that is getting attention anyway, that this is my fear. You may get, you know, all this auto-generated content that's getting attention and will, that will still, you know, perform very well in, in search engine results. So it's probably the assumption now, but that might change. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's many... Uh, APIs like, you know, the, of course, DALI 2 is, is got it in OpenAI um, API and stuff like that. We haven't implemented any of those because I think people are probably going to want to play around with the image creation process in an iterative thing with the prompt. They're probably going to play with it and fine tune it and just get it the way they want. And Drupal, like a little thumbnail on Drupal is probably not the, um, the best way to do that. But we, we could implement that, but we haven't because I, th I think the way people would work with that would be. Um, you know, more, you know, in a visual sort of way in another system. But there's no reason why you couldn't have a thumbnail being generated in an automatic way as well on, on bulk. We, we haven't tested that yet or implemented that, but yeah, it's certainly possible. <laughs> yes, this is all pretty cutting edge, I've got to, I've got to say. So, I mean, we started this module uh, a few, uh, or well, six months ago. Um, of course, like with ChatGPT, there's been a huge amount of interest. There are other ChatGPT modules out there that are sort of working in a different way, not, not such a pluggable way, but just getting wired in across the Drupal uh, interface as well. And I haven't looked at the traction of those, but, you know, Dries has spoken of those, and I imagine they've got pretty good, uh, you know, there's momentum there as well. So, yeah, they're obviously a very new area, and, you know, we're just trying to, yeah, this stuff with ECA that we've been doing is, yeah, it's all pretty recent, so. 
Same with ECA module as well. It's just sort of hitting its stride, and, and the VBO one's only got a, you know forty users or something. So it is all sort of quite a, a new area. Sorry, the Govs. Will we be able to get into Gov CMS? Well, in the, in the Drupal seven version of Gov CMS, I think rules was in there, and that if I believe, if I'm correct, and you know the criteria in the early days of Gov CMS was a module you know should be reusable and flexible, and you know rules or ECA is an excellent candidate from that perspective. So I, I think there is a lot of value that can be um, brought into into that, but you know that's a matter for, for Gov CMS. <laughs> you can you can go you can go work on it, Jenny.